Okay, so in each one of these questions, we have um, an inclined plane and we have a coefficient of friction on that plane. We're asked to find the frictional force of the particle, which is FR, and we're asked to find the acceleration as a result of this down the plane. So for each question, I'm going to label up the forces so that we can see everything that's going on. So in this first one, I have my weight downwards, which is 10 G. I have an angle in here of 10, force down, force along. This one must be 10 G sine 10. This force into the plane must be 10 G cos 10. And the reaction normal force up from the plane onto the particle must be the same as this one must be 10 G cos 10. Okay, we also have, um, I can label it on here, a frictional force, FR, which we're going to work out to start with. So FR, we start with mu times our reaction normal force. So FR is going to equal 0 0.3, as our coefficient is 0 0.3, multiplied by 10 G cos 10. So our friction force, our dynamic friction force is 28.95 newtons. Okay, so this is the maximum force that it can apply. Okay, so if we are, if we do get this particle moving, that's going to be the force applied. Okay, now the question is, is this particle going to move or not? Well, let's think about this. We have down the slope a force of 10 G sine 10. And working against this, we have this frictional force here of 28.95 newtons. And this is going to equal 10 times the acceleration. Okay. So when we work this out, we actually get a negative value. Okay. So actually this side is negative, which means that the frictional force is bigger than 10 G sine 10. So we actually get minus 1.19. Now what this means is that the particle doesn't move. Okay, so it does, it does not move. And the reason it doesn't move is because there isn't enough force down the slope to overcome this frictional force. Okay, so it doesn't move, um, stay still. So again, we're going to label up the forces that we've got. You'll get into the habit of this very, very quickly. So we have uh, reaction normal here, our weight down, which is 50 G, force parallel, 50 G sine 30, force into the slope, 50 G cos 30, and we have our frictional force this way. Okay, so again, start with FR equals mu RN. If we work this out, we're going to do 0 0.3 multiplied by 50 G cos 30. So our FR force for the second one um, comes to 127. 0.3 newtons. Okay. Right, so force down the slope is 50 G sine 30, and we subtract our frictional force from this. Okay, 50 A. So in this case, um, 50 G sine 30 is bigger than the frictional force, so it does move. And when you work this through, you get an answer of 2. 0.35 ms minus 2. Okay, so it does move down the slope and accelerates at 2.35. Okay, so this component, the 50g sine 30, is big enough and the angle is big enough to overcome that frictional force. Okay, next, question C. Okay, question C. 
Um, again, we're going to label our force up. And it's always a good idea to make an early prediction. Okay, so this one, um, Rn, again, 18g down, 18g sine 5, and 18g cos 5. Okay, let's make an early prediction. We haven't got much of a slope here, and we've got a very, very high coefficient of friction. So I don't think it's going to move. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's not going to. But we need to do the math on it anyway. So let's find the frictional force. The frictional force is 0 0.7 times by 18g cos 5. And this frictional force is 123 newtons. So we do 18g sine 5, subtract 1, 2, 3, equals 18a. Now, 18g sine 5 is not going to be very much. In fact, it comes out to about 15.4 newtons. Okay, so straight away we can see it's not going to move. Okay, because the friction is too much. Okay, there's too much frictional force for this to overcome it. Okay, we'd have to uh, increase the inclination of the plane in order to do this. Okay, so no movement. Right, last question. Our weight is 7g down. Um, we have a force um, along the plane of 7g sine 45. Um, our reaction normal is the same as our force into the plane, which is 7g cos 45. Okay, coefficient of friction is 0 0.1. So the first thing we work out is our frictional force, so FR equals 0 0.1, so not much friction at all, times by 7G cos 45. Okay, so early prediction on this one, I think we're definitely going to get some movement. Very steep slope, very little coefficient of friction. I think we're going to have an acceleration. So the frictional force is quite small. It's only 4.85 newtons. It's going to slow it down a tiny bit, but not an awful lot. So we have 7g sine 45 subtract 4.85, and that equals 7a. When you work this through, you should get an answer of about 6.24. Okay, so that's using friction in a kind of basic context. Okay, so question two. We have a particle on a plane um, and we have an inclination of theta. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.5. But I've given this question in an interesting way. Um, this is actually quite common. Um, I've got tan theta equals three quarters. So let's think about what this actually means. One thing you could do is you could go, right, well, therefore tan Oh, sorry, theta equals tan to the minus one of three quarters. Um, don't do this. That's not a great idea. The reason that's not a great idea is because if you do that, you end up with a, an inaccurate angle. And actually, I'm going to show you there's a much easier way of doing it. If we think about this triangle, okay, I'll draw up here. Um, we have a right angle triangle. And we have an angle here of theta. Because it's 3 over 4, remember that tan is opposite over adjacent, so this one must be 3, and this one must be 4. Now, using Pythagoras, we know that as a result of that, the hypotenuse must be 5, the 3, 4, 5 triangle. How does this help? Well, whatever this force is here, and let's start labelling it on, because it's important to sort of make the link here. If I label on my force here, I have um, 15 kilograms times g, so I have 15g straight down. So essentially my hypotenuse is 15. Well, let's go back to this triangle. Um, 
it was three, four, five, but if I make the hypotenuse 15 instead of five, how does that affect the other ones? Well, this one's now 15, I've times it by three. Now, the nice thing about Pythagorean triples is that actually, if I times this one by three, I can times this one by three and this one by three. If you don't believe me, um, just try it. Do nine squared plus 12 squared square rooted and you will get 15. So look, this triangle becomes this triangle. So in any triangle on this, if this one's 15G, this component must be 9G and this component must be 12G. And so actually by doing it this way, it makes our life so much easier. I'll show you. If I label on my other component forces, I have um, my force along the plane here, and I have my force into the plane. This is theta. Remember, this hypotenuse is 15g. Therefore, this one here down the slope must be 9g. Okay, we've seen it over here. This one must be 12g. And look, you don't have to worry about sine and cos anymore. These are just the values. Okay? We have our reaction normal this way, which must also equal 12g. Great, okay. So now I've got this labelled up. Much easier, there's no signs or causes, uh, and we can work this out. Okay, the frictional force is going to be mu, 0 0.5, times by the reaction normal, which is 12. So my frictional force is 6g. And when I resolve, what the acceleration is going to be, it's going to be 9g down the slope, subtract 6g, I can label it on here as well if you want, fr equals 6g, and that equals 15a. So I get 3g equals 15a, a equals 1 fifth g. Okay. Uh, in decimal, that's 1.96. This is a really important method. Don't think this is a one-off. Um, you will often get given your inclination as a ratio like this, and it looks scary, but actually it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so please don't be tempted to write, oh, tan, uh, sorry, theta therefore equals this decimal number. Don't do that. Do it this way, draw your triangles, and you find the components really easily. This working here is simple, and it lends itself to an easier approach. Okay, question three. <clears throat> okay, so we have um, a static situation here. Okay, so this is static. We will do more static stuff um, in the next bit of work we do. But um, essentially what we've got is a, an equilibrium situation. Now, again, um, label on the forces to start with. That's always a, a good first move. If you don't know how to attempt the question, just spend some time labeling the forces on and maybe by the time you finish doing that, you will worked out how to do it. Maybe. Okay. So forces being labeled on, our weight down as usual, 20 G component parallel, 20 G sine theta into the plane, 20 G cos theta up the plane. Okay. Our frictional force. Okay, and finally our reaction normal, okay, which is in this case 20g cos theta. Okay, well, if I write this, if I draw my point here, um, remember when I, it's just a bit of a sort of habit I do, I draw a kind of equals equals sign like this when I do a static problem. So forces into the plane are 20g cos theta, reaction normals this way. This way I have my frictional force. Down the, uh, the slope I have 20g sine theta. Okay. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.25. So what I can do is I can relabel some of these things. So my Rn must be 20g cos theta. My frictional force must be 0 0.25 times by this um, Rn, which is 20g cos theta. And because we're static, all of these must be equal. So this one's equal to this one, this one's equal to this one. So I'm going to write that as an equation. So I have 20g 
sine theta equals my frictional force up the slope, okay? Because this one minus my frictional force is going to give me um, zero. It's going to give me an acceleration of zero. So our 20g sine theta, that equals 0 0.25 times 20g cos theta. Now a quarter of 20 is 5, so this becomes 5g cos theta, 20g sine theta. You're going to have to use uh, one of your trig identities here. I'm going to divide by cos, so I'm going to have sine theta over cos theta. This side I'm going to have 5g over 20g. The g's knock out, and I'm left with tan theta equals a quarter. Okay, so therefore, theta equals 14.04 degrees. Okay, so by equating my force up the slope and my force down the slope, I can make an equation which I can then solve. Okay, physicist is trying to find the coefficient of friction between a textbook and a slope. Um, they incline the plane until it slips and it finally moves when it's 19 degrees. Okay, well, we've seen a similar question to this before. So I'm going to draw my diagram here. I'm aware this is not 19 degrees, but we'll be okay. So my book here is 0 0.8 kilograms. My inclination is 19. It's about to move down the slope. So think about the last question we did. This is almost a carbon copy of it. Okay, we have something that's about to slip down the slope. Now, instead of finding um, the angle, we want to find the coefficient of friction. So I have my weight down. Force into the slope, and force down the slope. So I have 0 0.8 g cos 19, 0 0.8 g sine 19. Frictional force up the slope is FR. My reaction normal is 0 0.8 g cos 19. I don't know what my mu value is. Okay, but what I can do is I can, just like the last question, draw up um, my kind of forces to see which one's balanced. So in this case, my force down the slope, 0 0.8 g sine 19, okay, must be equal to the frictional force, okay? So the frictional force, so it's about to slip, so they are equal. They are exactly the same magnitude. So 0 0.8 g sine 19, fr is mu, which we don't know, multiplied by my normal reaction force, which is 0 0.8 g cos 19. So to find my mu value, this is simply my sine 19 divided by my cos 19. The reason for this is that my 0 0.8 g's cancel out. Okay, I don't need them there, they just cancel. <clears throat> okay, and when I do this, I get a value, my mu value is 0 0.34. Okay, so dead simple. Um, set them equal to each other because they are balanced um, and divide through. The 0 0.8 g's cancel, we end up with just um, essentially tan 19. Okay, so I've already started to label up this situation. We have a skier going down a slope. They have a mass of 80 kilograms. So label on the weight first. And we can label on these components. So 80g sine 27, 80g cos 27, Rm. And we're also told that they have a constant air resistance of 100 newtons. So let's put that on here. And they also have a resistive force Fr. Now Fr is going to um, equal, if you work this out first, it's going to equal mu times Rn. So our FR is 0 0.05 times by 
ATG cos 27. Okay, so we want to calculate the speed once they've gone 50 meters down the slope. So the first thing we need to work out is um, the acceleration. Okay, so down the slope, uh, we have 80g sine 27, subtract 100, subtract fr, and this equals 80a. Okay, so let's write this here. So we have 80g sine 27 minus 100 minus 0 0.05 times by 80g cos 27, and that equals 80a. Okay, so if you bung this into a calculator, hopefully you understand this, we have, this is the force down the slope, and these two are the forces against that motion. So these two here, top left, work against this 80g sine 27. So eventually divide by 80, and we get an acceleration down the slope of 2 0.76. Okay, so using our SUVATs, we want to find the um, speed down the slope. So to do that, we're going to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We're going to assume that we start at rest. So v squared is going to equal 2 times 2.76 times by 50 therefore our v is 16.7 meters per second okay so they're going at 16.7 meters per second and now we've changed the situation slightly the skier needs to stop very very quickly um, because there's a bunch of ski schoolers and we need to apply uh, friction and apply force into the slope to stop us doing this. Now, the first thing to work out is what deceleration I need to have. Okay, so the deceleration that I need, um, I can work out using a SUVAT. We want to go from 16.7 meters per second to rest in 30 meters. So, um, we need to work out the deceleration. So we're gonna use V squared again. V squared equals U squared plus two AS. We want to work out the acceleration. So if we rearrange this, we get V squared minus U squared over two S. To rearrange it, remember that our final velocity now we want to be zero. Our initial velocity is 16.7. So we do uh, zero minus 16.7 squared over 2 times s, so 2 times 30, so 60. So our deceleration, let's work this out, our deceleration must be 4.65 meters per second per second. Okay. So that should be negative. So we decelerate at 4.65. Okay. So we need to work out how much force to apply in order for uh, this deceleration to take place. So what we can do is we can think, okay, well, what do I know? I know that I've got 80 G sine 27 down the slope. That's gonna stay the same. I know that I still have 100 Newtons of resistive force from the air resistance but I do not know how much force I need to provide friction-wise with the ski. So I don't know this FR, but what I do know is it's gonna be 80 times by my deceleration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some values. I'm gonna rearrange it slightly. So I'm going to end up with FR, or my force to stop, equals 80G sine 27, subtract 100, plus, that's plus because the A here is negative, so it's plus 80 times by 4.65. 
this gives me a force of 627.9 newtons. Okay, so just to think about this briefly, we have the force down the slope here, minus the 100, so the 100 helps us, plus this force, extra force I need to apply with my skis. So um, we need to apply 630-ish newtons with the skis. Finally, what's the coefficient of friction between the edges of the ski and the snow? Um, well, if we have 627.9 is my FR, this must equal mu times R. We know that R is uh, 80G cos 27. So mu equals 627 divided by my normal reaction force. And this gives me a mu value of 0 0.89. Actually, it's almost 0 0.9, so it's roughly 0 0.9. Okay, so we've changed how we ski down it, we go from having a very low friction on the bottom of the skis to stopping by applying more force with the edges. Okay, so we worked out the acceleration originally, we worked out the speed we get to, we worked out the deceleration required to get to zero and 30 meters, we found that as a force, and then we found the coefficient of friction. Okay, the marble run question. So this one, um, we have uh, no frictional air resistance, okay? So we don't have a frictional situation. All we have is we have the distance, the inclination, and um, the fact that nothing's gonna slow it down. So we can just split this into sections. So for the first one, in each, in each case, we can work out what the force is and divide it by um, the mass. Obviously it's frictionless, so the M's don't matter. So actually what we can do is we can think about each section. If we call this section one, this section two, this section three, and this section four, for section one, the acceleration must be G sine five. Hopefully you're okay with that. Thinking back to our frictionless inclined plane. Now we want to know um, the speed uh, that it's gonna be going at. Um, when it crosses the finish line. We also want to know what the time is. So to work out the speed, we can do um, V um, squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So for the speed, I'm gonna go V squared equals um, U squared plus 2AS. And in each case, you know, we start with U1 is zero. This is my V1. This is also my U two if you see what I mean and I go through and I put the end speed as the initial speed for each section. So for the first one I'm going to have uh, v squared equals zero plus two times my acceleration which is g sun five times by the distance it travels which is 20. So for the first section I get a v value of five Point eight meters per second. But what I'll do is I'll keep this accurate on my calculator when I do it. So I'll keep this as an exact value when I put it into the next one. So the speed at the end of the section is 5.8. Uh, the time it takes, for the time it takes, I'm gonna use V equals U plus AT, which I'll rearrange to V minus U over A, and then just plug in these values. Okay, so for this one, I have um, v minus u, u is zero, so I have um, 5.8 divided by g sine five. Okay, so the time it takes for this section is 6.8 seconds. Okay, again, I'm gonna keep these more accurate than you, what you see here, rounded these, but I will keep them accurate on my calculator. So for section two, um, the acceleration is g sine 15. So we have v squared 
um, in this case, because we have an initial speed of 5.8, I put 5.8 squared plus 2 times my acceleration, which is g sine 15, running out of space, sorry, times by uh, 30 meters. Okay, this gives me a value of 13. 7 meters per second by the time it gets into that section and the time it takes again I use my v equals u plus at so I use um, 13.7 subtract 5.8 divided by g sine 15 and this gives me a value of 3 one seconds to one decimal place. Okay, section three, the acceleration must be g sine 10. So to work out the velocity, I'll do v squared uh, equals 13.7 squared plus two times g sine 10 times by 45. This gives me a v value of 18.4. So the marble is sort of really going for it at this point. Um, and for the T, I have 18.4 minus 13.7 divided by G sine 10, which gives me a T value of uh, 2.8 seconds. Okay, my final section, section four, there's no friction. So therefore, the speed stays constant. Okay, the time it takes is quite easy. The time it takes, but at the bottom it's traveling at 18.4 meters per second. So speed is distance over time. So time must be uh, distance divided by speed. Distance is 25. The speed um, is 18. So the last section um, takes one point four seconds. Okay, so when I add all of these together, um, my final velocity here and at the finish, which is the same. Um, is 18.4 and my total time when I add all of these together gives me about 12.7 seconds okay so by considering each section individually and carrying over the suvats and the uh, speeds we can get to this final solution Okay, last question. So the last question, um, we have our uh, gravel trap and we have a lorry with a mass of, of 20,000 kilograms traveling at 130 kilometers per hour. So 130 km per hour and the lorry is 20,000 kilograms. Okay, labeling my forces on, I have 20,000 G. I have my force into the plane and I have my component along the plane, which is 20,000 G sine 10. Now it says that we don't need to consider that there's any um, friction going down the hill because um, it doesn't say there is. Okay, so there's no resistive force going down the hill. So what we need to do is work out what this velocity is when it gets to the end here, and then how far into this it goes, because this has a coefficient of friction of 0 0.93, so it's gonna slow it down very quickly. Okay, well the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to convert 130 kilometers per hour into meters per second. Um, and so to do this, um, you want to times by thousand divided by three thousand six hundred. 
this gives me 36 point one recurring meters per second okay my force component down the hill is 20,000 g sine 10 there's no resistive forces so this must equal 20,000 times a so my acceleration is g sine 10 the speed it is at the bottom of the hill uh, it travels 100 meters down the road so the speed at the bottom of the hill um, is going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as v squared is going to equal 36.1 squared plus 2 times 9 sorry 2 times g sine 10 times 100 so my v value at the bottom increases to 40.6 meters per second i then want to work out how far into the gravel trap it goes so in the gravel trap it's horizontal so it's level okay so the friction is going to be 0 0.93 so high level of resistance times by the normal reaction force now the normal reaction force is going to be 20,000 g there's no inclination, so it's just the weight of it, okay? So the frictional force, 0 0.93 times by 20,000 G is uh, 182,280 newtons, so a high level of resistance. Now, to find the deceleration of this, we have this force, so we go 182280 equals 20,000 times by A. So my deceleration is negative, so it's minus 9.114. Let's keep it accurate. So how far does it go in? Well, um, again, we need to use our old friend v squared equals u squared plus 2as. The final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is 40.6 plus 2 times minus 9.114 times s. So if I do 40.6 squared divided by 2 times uh, my deceleration, I get a distance travelled um, of, I'm just going to check my answer again, 2 times distance is 90.4 meters okay so I travel down the slope I get to about 40.6 meters per second here the resistance from the gravel is 180,000 newtons and this means I this means I decelerate at about 10 meters per second and that means I go 90 metres into the gravel trap. OK, so for question two, I'm not going to go through it because actually it's an open-ended question. Essentially, what you could do is you could design a ramp which is steep to slow it down using the normal component of gravity. Sorry, the component of gravity along the slope. Or you could have um, a slope with gravel on it. Or you could have... Um, a kind of stepped slope you could have an increasing gradient you can so it's up to you how you want to do this but i want you to design one and see what your results are okay you could you could even think about the fact that you may have a limitation on space and a limitation on funds okay so the bigger ramp the more it's going to cost how can you do it in the smallest amount of space
There's lots of solutions to how you can stop lorries that are out of control, and it's definitely worth uh, a quick Google um, to see what options are out there. Okay, all done.